Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moikes from Big Mountain Studio, and today we're going to talk about a new feature in Xcode 9 called color sets or named colors. And the advantage of named colors is that you can centralize all your colors for your application in one place, and then if you ever need to change anything, you can just change it in this one place and it'll take effect throughout your application where you reference these colors. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, I kind of do that now using a class that has all my colors for my application. Maybe it's a theme class. Well, that's fine. There's no problem with doing it that way. But I want to show you about named colors and some of the advantages that they provide. So it gives you another option in the future. OK, let's get started. OK, here you see a project that is just beginning. And there's no colors yet. Everything is in black and white. And the designers are telling you that they're going to give you some colors, but the colors aren't set in stone right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these colors and we're going to create named colors out of them. So let's take a look at the first theme they give you. Okay, here we go. So they give you this theme and there's three colors. The lighter brown color is like your accent. The darker brown is going to be your background color. And then that lighter blue color will be your tint color. And the tint color is just a color that goes to anything that the user can tap on or interact with in your application, such as a UI button. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll create named colors for all three of those colors right there. So let's create some space so we can still see the, the theme here. And when you create named colors, you actually create the colors in your assets folder. So we can go here and we can add a new color set. And you see there's a new option here for color set. And then we want to give it a color. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then we want to give it a name. So let's see. So let's start with the dark brown color. There we go. And then to actually give it a color, what you want to do is select it and then go into your properties. And then you have the color right here. So if we bring this up, we can just bring, usually you'll see it like this. Just click on the eyedropper tool and select your color. And there you go. There's your first named color. But I'm going to give you a tip here, uh, something to keep in mind. I don't recommend actually naming your named colors after the color they represent. Because if you're going to change this to maybe like a red color in the future, well, you have to change the name too, and then you'll break all of your references. So give it a name that won't be changing in the future. So I'm going to change this color, and I'm going to call it background instead. Then I can change it to any color, and background is still applicable. Okay, now we have two more colors to create, but I'm going to give you another option here too. Instead of creating all your colors here with all of your image assets, it might be better to create just a whole new asset folder instead of mixing in your colors and your, and your images. So let's do that instead. We're going to come here, we're going to create a new file, and if you scroll down, you'll see there's an option here, Asset Catalog. So let's just create that. And we'll call this our theme. Okay, good. And this will hold our theme colors. Okay, so we're going to get rid of this named color. And we're just going to create all of our named colors here in the theme. Okay, so this was our background. And you just click on the color, go into your properties, click on the eyedropper tool, there's our background. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create one called accent. Then we have another one for our tint. There we go. Okay, so there's our themes right here, our theme colors. Now let's apply them. Go into our storyboard, and let's create ourselves a little bit more room here. Okay, we can start by setting the background color. I'm just going to click on the view here, and I'm going to click on the background color. And you'll notice now in this color picker, 
there's a new section called named colors so whenever you create named colors they'll show up in your color picker now and we have an accent color so I'm going to use that accent color to apply to this image and all the text uh, let me deselect that let's just start with the text first that'll be accent and for the images just to let you know these images if we click on them I set them to render as template image and what that does is that allows you to change the color of this image in your application by using the tint color so we want to use the accent color for the tint on this so if I come here go to the tint I want to change it to accent okay now this might be a good time to talk to you about something else you may have noticed in the past that if you use this method of changing the color of an image by using the render as template and then changing the tint color in the past if you run the application right now that tint color would not be applied what you had to do was you had to reset that image in code or you had to take away the image here like this and then reset it like in your view did load function in your view controller well the good news is and I don't know if Apple intended this or not but if you use named colors to set the tint you no longer have to do that you can just set the image and in your assets folder of course have it as render as template and then supply it with a new tint color as long as it's a named color it'll work if you try using one of these colors up here or selecting a new color by itself it won't work okay so those colors are set now here is another thing that you have to keep in mind for this button I set it to a custom class UI button X which is over here and what that does is that has IV inspectable properties that show up here now and if you don't know what IV inspectables are I had I do have other videos that go into it more deeply so you can watch those but there's something I want you to notice here now what we want to do is if we want to change the tint of this button normally what you do is you go to the view and you can change the tint from here which is exactly what I'm going to do and you notice it changes the tint for the button that's because the tint works on a hierarchy basis if you go to the highest object in the document outline and set the tint there then all the controls underneath it will also use the same tint by default so that's a good way to set the tint for all of your buttons and all your controls is just go to the the root and set the, the tint there but you'll notice here that this outline is still black that's because there's a separate color to set the border here uh, using this custom control but look at this so we want to use the tint color for that border but notice there's no named colors for your custom control properties <laughs> this this bugs me because it, they should be there they should be available and you should be able to use those named colors from this color picker I did submit a bug to Apple so maybe they'll fix it in the future but I'm not certain so let's just run this and see how it looks right now okay good it's really coming along except for that border right there now what we'll have to do is we'll have to set this border in code so let's do that and referencing a named color is a little bit different when you do it through code okay and here's the code that's already here and as you can see I I don't have to set the image if I'm using named colors so I'm going to delete that since I don't need it anymore but I do want to set the border color of my button so that is called the cup button and we want the border color and this is a property that I created normally if you want to set that color you would have to go through the uh, layer property right there and you notice it's a CG color but I created my own property called border color here 
Okay, so how do we set this? Well, you have one option. If you come over to your media library over here, you'll notice that the themed colors appear in there. So I could take this tint color and I could just drag it and drop it into my code and it becomes a color literal. But that's probably something you don't want to do. I just wanted to show you that the named colors do show up in your media library, but you probably won't want to use it because what will happen is if I change that theme, the color of the tint, here, let's just watch real quick. Say I change it to this color, this reddish color, and we come back into the code. Well, notice this this color didn't change. If you go to if I go to the media library, yeah, that color changed right there, but the one in code, which is a color literal, did not change. So you don't want to use that. Instead, what you want to do is just look at the uh, UI color constructor options here, and you want to use the one that says named for your named color and we call this tint so I'm just going to use the name of that named color and with this constructor you know the code doesn't know if this color exists or not so we'll have to explicitly unwrap it okay let's see how that looks alright there we go okay everything looks great and the designer comes back to you and says hey the theme has changed once again so now they want to change the theme to these colors and this the green now is going to be your accent and the background is going to be a little bit lighter like this cream color here and your new tint is going to be this reddish color okay so let's change those colors and see what happens we're going to go to our theme accent is the green The background is now the lighter color, and our tint is this reddish color. There we go. Okay, let's see how that looks. Now if we go back to our storyboard, uh, look at this. <laughs> the controls are still using the old theme colors, but if we run the application, let's see if they updated they did update so so what's happening here well my guess is this is a bug and because I think it's a bug I actually submitted another bug <laughs> to Apple to ask them to fix this the only way I can get rid of this like I try clicking on other storyboards and come back and the colors don't update the only way I can get it to update is to close the application and open it back up. So let's close the project and go back into it. And there you see the colors have updated. All right, guys, those are some tips about using named colors. Right now, they don't update on the storyboards, but you can just, you have to close the project and open it back up. I don't know how important that is to you or how often you'll be changing the colors. That's just one of the bugs of uh, having a new feature in <laughs> Xcode 9. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you, you gained some useful information from using color sets in your project. And I hope you can see the advantages they provide you, where you can just create your theme and be able to change all your colors in one place. And you can now conveniently access these colors just from the color picker with this new section called Named Colors. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you think it's something useful that your friends might want to know, feel free to share it on Twitter or Facebook or any other social media that you use. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing. Thanks, guys.